Hello, everybody. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Ginger. How are you guys today? Hello, Dixie Bell. And Mon, Moan. Not sure if I'm saying that right, but hello. Hi, Vaughn and Kelsey. We have Eva, Sherry, Heather. Hello, everybody. So as you guys pop on, say hi. I see a lot of you are saying hello. Oops, let me get you out of there. Hi, Kimberly. <laughs> Yeah, so let us know where you're tuning in from and say hi. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm Bianca, owner and artist of Lotus Theory Designs. I am the brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. And today I want to demonstrate to you, and fingers crossed, I hope it goes well, the iron-on method using the new bells and whistles uh, rice paper. So we're going to decoupage. And I have a piece prepped for that behind me. Hey. Wait, where'd you go? Where'd you go? That's my sister. Hey, little sister. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let me let me take you through what I have up until this point. So I have a jelly cupboard, and I thought that it would be perfect to use this colorful tiles design on, which is one of the new um, rice papers offered by Dixie Bell. And I just thought that that would be perfect. So I went ahead and I coated the base. This is kernel mustard. Okay. Um, and then I went and head into the centers in white, in this case, cotton. Um, as I go along, guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down. So let me explain to you why I went ahead and did the center in white, rather than just going the easy route and painting the whole thing kernel mustard this yellow. Um, I did this because when these get applied, they are just a skosh transparent. And so I really wanted to make sure that, and then I think the yellow behind it would have been cool, but I really wanted a cleaner look for these. So as we iron it on, you'll see what I'm talking about, but it's going to kind of fill in and give me like a blank slate rather than picking up on the yellow behind it once we iron it on. So you'll see once it gets on there what I'm talking about. Okay, so once I got all of that done, I ga used Gator Hide. Okay, that's what I'm going to be using as my adhesive. And I went ahead and did two coats on this one. And I only did one here so I can show you how I applied the Gator Hide. Okay, so one coat. And then I let it dry probably for like an hour or so um, before I went ahead and hit it with another coat of Gator Hide. So, um, I'm going to, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to take you through just applying the gator hide. So I have my gator hide brush wrapped up so elegantly and <laughs> in a plastic bag. Okay. So the name of the paper is colorful tiles. That's the name of this paper. And there's a whole bunch of other choices to choose from. This is the one that I'm using today. Yes, Mary. The weather is great right now, except I still have my air conditioner going in here. <laughs> Hi, Louis from Portugal. Okay, so let me take you through. I'm just going to slap some gator hide on here. Okay. You can also use the other top coats, okay? I wouldn't use wax for this process, but you can use the, the clear coats for this process. So let me get down so I can. Hello, Lorraine. Keep an eye on what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the gator hide onto my brush. Okay. And the trick with gator hide, you guys, um, you don't want to overwork it. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of pulling. And so when I applied this, I literally put just this little bit amount, this little amount onto my brush. And I'm going to work in sections. Okay. So Notice how I am not spending a whole lot of time on one section, okay? I keep, my, I keep it moving, I keep my brush moving, okay? 
don't overwork it. And you also don't want to put too much because it will glop up on you and that's not, not what we want. Okay. Okay, that's it. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have any drips going. I'm also gonna note that my cotton application here isn't perfect, okay? So I didn't go solid white, it's only two coats. I didn't feel the need because it's gonna be behind the decoupage paper. I didn't feel the need to, you know, go so many coats so that, you know, it, it, it's just, yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Okay, let me wrap this up. This is one of the many ways that I store brushes when they're not in use. These grocery bags are great for that. You can also use saran wrap, but that costs money. <laughs> Let me just close this up. And then I'm gonna move on to the top. So I have this iron and I got it at, I think a yard sale. You can see the, maybe an estate sale, the little sticker on it. So they are available. This one's kind of vintage. Um, I'm not sure where but it's perfect for what I'm doing. I've also seen little tiny irons. They look like maybe kids' irons. I think Amy from AJ's Vintage um, used one in a video and I just couldn't stop laughing. It was so cute and tiny. So either one of those would be fine. Yes, good. Uh, somebody must have asked that. Gator hide shouldn't change the color of the papers. No, it, it won't or it shouldn't. Um, I used it, I used Gator Hide on another project and I had no issues. Hi, Amy. Speaking of Amy. Okay, so let's, let's move forward. So I already have a couple of pieces here pre-cut. I'm going to move you guys in so that you can really see what I have going on here. And how cute is this knob? Hobby Lobby. It's perfect, right? It'll be perfect. Okay, so this is dry. And again, two coats. And I'm just going to line it up. Give me a sec. I know my head's in the way. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot a step. And here I am thinking I am super organized today. I am on time. I have everything I need. Turns out I don't. I am reaching for some parchment paper. It's a good thing my kitchen's right next door. That was almost a disaster. Okay. I'm like, I knew I was forgetting something. So parchment paper, you need a layer between your iron and your decoupage paper. Not wax paper, by the way, parchment paper. Wax paper would be bad. It would leave a icky residue on your piece. And again, I know my head's in the way. Let me just get lined up here. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Hi, uh, is it Dodie? And Jennifer, I got a couple of YouTube viewers. Hello. Thank you for saying hi and letting us know where you're watching from. Okay. Focus. I need to focus. All right. So again, parchment paper. I need a layer between the iron and the paper. Okay. Bye, Amy. And I'm just going to work it on. And again, fingers crossed. I actually have not used the iron-on method a whole lot. So I'm kind of experimenting with these. I have used it, I think, two other times before. And I don't really prefer one method over the other as far as if I do it this way or use the, um, or just do it, you know, put the gator hide on and then apply the paper right away to the wet gator hide. 
it really just depends on the look that I'm going for. That look where you put it right on top of the wet gator hide is gonna give you more of a crinkly look. Whereas this should iron it on straight. So I'm just working my iron out. Notice how I started in the center, okay? I'm just kind of moving out and Okay, it worked, yay. <laughs> so obviously I have to attach the rest of it, but I'm gonna bring it in for a little bit of a close up before I continue going. Yes, hi Debbie, it has been a while. I know Amy says, this is one of my favorite new decoupage papers. Isn't it fabulous? I'm loving the whole, how do you say, is it like Talavera or Mexican tile look? I'm loving it, so fun. Anyways, totally wrinkle free. Okay, but I do need to keep going. So I'm gonna keep going. Let's work my way up. I would say like ironing clothes, you don't wanna just like leave your iron in one spot and get distracted. And, um, you know, because there is paint materials underneath. I did do that once. I think the first time I was using this method, I left my iron on just a, just a hair too long in one spot. And I could tell that the materials underneath started to bubble up just as you would if you were, you know, stripping something and using a heat gun to do it. So keep your iron moving. And definitely takes some patience, I've noticed, this technique, because you want to make sure that it's on there, that there's no air bubbles. And again, I'm just going to note, again, you want to make sure that you're using parchment paper and not wax paper for this step. Luckily for me, we uh, have a lot of parch parchment paper in this house because it's a must have when making cookies and I love cookies. All right, let me move down. Sticking on there really well. Oh, I'm so excited. I just love, love, love this pattern. And I'm just going to keep this iron going. Let me make sure I'm not hitting the gator hide side. So I want to be careful there. I'm going to put another piece there in just a sec. So at this point, I will check to see if um, there's any like air bubbles, maybe some spots that I missed. I can do that by obviously eyeing it, but I can also lightly run my hand over it and like right here I can feel something happen in there a couple of bumps going on here so got an air bubble going on there Got a stubborn air bubble going on there. If push comes to shove, I will poke it with my exacto knife and release the air. I might have to do that. Okay. So that's one piece. I have another piece cut out, but let me check the comments and make sure that I'm not missing any questions. Thank you, Amy. Amy says, if you're using a regular clothing iron, make sure you turn off your steam setting. That's a really good point. Thank you for saying that. So that's what we're going to do with this B. We're going to cover it up with this little sliver of paper here. Any other questions before I move forward? Um, Debbie, that's a really good question. Um, I don't know. I guess in my brain, gator hide is way more durable and tougher. So why not use something stronger behind it? 
I have done both ways. I've done gator hide and I've done satin. Either one would be fine for you. Oh, okay. So Linda says, I have an iron like this. Got it on Amazon. It's called Hangar 9, I think. So thanks for that, Linda. If anybody's wondering where you can get this particular kind of iron, at least the shape of it. Um, any other questions? Yes, Debbie, this is rice paper. Good question, Tracy. We're going to trim the sides as soon as I get it on there. No, Kendra, it's not the only way to put it on. So Kendra wants to know, is that the only way to put it on? No, um, I'm choosing to do it this way so that it's wrinkle free. I could have put the gator hide on and just put it on over the wet gator hide. However, you run the risk of getting a lot of crinkles, which sometimes is an awesome effect. It really for a sec but I'm back let me know if you can see me that was so bizarre sorry about that yes Kendra you can use satin either way is fine can you guys see me I lost you for a sec or it lost me um just somebody let me know that you can see me so I can move forward you're back thanks Mary okay moving forward so See which way did this piece go so i cut this little piece out and it's going to go there to fill in that white space there so this is where my head's going to get in the way again i just need to make sure that i'm aligned properly and i'm probably going to slightly overlap the tiles above so i don't end up with a white space Tricky, tricky. Okay. Here we go. And I think I just shifted it. Hold on. Let me just double check. Nope. I'm good. Okay. As long as I can get the iron going, get it secured on there in the center, I can relax a bit. So let me just get it on there. And I'm going to put some focus on the seam there. I overlapped it just slightly because there's no gator hide on this to attach it. So I didn't overlap it too, too much. Just FYI. All right, give me a sec. So I did get some gator hide on the base and it's wanting to stick to it. Give me just a sec here. You come off of there. I'm not too worried about that. I can touch it up, it's not a big deal. I'm probably gonna end up doing some more, there we go, painting around this anyway. Um, but I really wanted to get these tiles on first to see where I wanted to go with it. So you can see that I'm, I made a mistake, not the end of the world. I can lightly sand that down and just patch it up. Not too concerned about it. Okay. So with that said, just make sure that the edges are pretty much on there because then I want to cut it down. Okay, how are we doing? That feels pretty good.
Okay, so I want to remove this excess. For this next part, I'm just going to make sure that my edges are on there because I'm just going to sand away the excess, but I don't want it to snag on the sandpaper. So let me just take a moment here to make sure that my edges are on there. Good. So just again, so it doesn't snag on the sandpaper. All right, here we go. 220 grit, okay? Oh, Amy, thank you so much for helping answer the questions. Um, thank you for answering Tara's question. I see that. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you guys, um, I think that people are asking, can you use a clothes iron? They're just so big. Um, this is great for me because I feel like I have a bit more control um, rather than just going in with this big object and, um, you know, not feeling like I have the same amount of control. But So this paper, because it's thinner, it's not taking me a whole lot of pressure or force to just sand away the edges here. And I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and it's really coming off very easily. Now, if this were a thicker paper, maybe poster board, something like that, um, it would take, it would take a bit more. Make sure that you guys can see, I'm so sorry. There we go. Let me hit it from another angle. There we go. That's better. So I would recommend the 220 grit. You could probably go with a finer grit if you choose. I wouldn't go anything more coarse. I would not go more coarse, okay? Because you're, you're just going to tear it up. And then you're going to end up probably um, going down to raw wood as well. So... 220 grit is your friend. Not easy doing it from this angle, but you see it's working, right? Almost there. Again, not the greatest angle. And I am not left-handed. So this bottom piece has taken me a little bit longer. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you, when you're sanding it, that you sand it until it pretty much releases on its own, okay? Because again, you don't want to snag it. You don't want to just rip it off and maybe you're just, you know, you just tore up your whole design. Take your time. Just as you see I'm doing here and I'm pretty much sanding until it releases itself. That's a stubborn piece right there. There we go, okay. Stubborn here too. Almost done, you guys. Just gonna tear that away so it's not in my way. Okay, did I leave off here? Okay, so I got a goof up here, so that's not there, okay? Act like you don't see that. What do you think as far as the rest of it? I'll bring you in for a close-up, okay? Again, I'm gonna, 
feel, make sure that there's not some areas that I might need to address, make sure it's totally adhered before I move forward. So, and because of these raised edges here and the sanding technique, I pretty much have a perfect line and a little bit of sanding residue, not, not too much, but that line is pretty, pretty perfect. There we go. So that's one way of doing it. Of course, you can cut it down to size. If you have maybe a paper cutter, um, you could do it that way. Totally up to you, whatever makes you most comfortable. Yes, Kendra, so that was sanding paper, okay? And it's just 220 grit, just some 220 grit. And I just fold it into thirds so that honestly, it just feels more comfortable in my hand. It doesn't move around as much. And I just lightly went over the edges without a whole lot of force. Hey, I more let the sandpaper do the work for me rather than me. And I just went around until it released itself. So as you see here, ha, Yvonne, what goof up? <laughs> just happy accidents, right? There I go with Bob Ross again. Um, okay, so that pretty much concludes our lesson. So to recap, okay, kernel mustard on the base. I did cotton underneath. As you see, I did down here. This is cotton. I did cotton underneath because I wanted to make sure that because these papers can be just a bit transparent, I wanted to make sure that I was getting more of a solid design. I mean, actually, this is a bit more vibrant than this um, piece here that isn't adhered because of the white that went underneath. Um, probably hard to see through the camera here, but I can see it. It's definitely a bit more vibrant. Okay, so coat of gator hide. I let it dry for an hour. Another coat of gator, gator hide. Okay, I let that dry for probably another hour again. And then I used the iron on method by way of putting the paper down, a layer of parchment paper, and then I ironed. Okay, and I kept it, kept it moving. Okay, now for my next step, which I will be doing off camera, um, I'm gonna actually go over this in gator hide again to really lock it in. And again, I'm gonna take my time and just make sure that I don't have any air bubbles. If I do, before I put that top coat or top layer of gator hide on, okay, I'm gonna make sure that everything's down and solid. And you don't wanna put gator hide on and then, and then try to iron it because then this is gonna stick to the gator hide. Make sense? Any questions? Yes, thank you, Amy. Yes, okay, that's a great point. So when you seal the top of the paper again, papers expand when you wet it, and so you'll get some bubbles and wrinkles, but let it dry, and it'll contract back. She is absolutely correct on that, okay? So don't freak out when you put a coat of gator hide over the top here, and you're like, oh, the wrinkles, okay? I just spent all this time ironing so that I didn't get wrinkles. Relax, they'll go away once the gator hide is totally dry, okay? They'll kind of puff up, and then they'll go back into their form. Don't worry. Thank you so much for that, Amy. That's a really good point. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. So yeah, we just talked about that, Grace. Um, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is all raw paint, by the way. I don't even know what I'm doing here yet. I may add some stenciling. I may not. I was kind of flirting with some of the silk screen stencils by Dixie Bell. Um, maybe not this one because it's kind of Southwestern, but I was flirting with it. We'll see how I feel. But yes, at the end, I'll probably uh, gator hide the whole thing, okay? Yes, good question, Goldie. Both coats of gator hide were dry, correct, okay? So I did gator hide, waited an hour. Gator hide, waited an hour. Paper, and then I'll do gator hide on top of that to really lock it in. Okay, if you guys have any other questions, drop them in the comments. I'll try to get back um, to you. And then again, that little goof up there, not too worried about it. I'm just gonna end up taking that same sandpaper and I'll just work it away until it goes away and touch it up with paint. Really not a big deal. Um, actually, is it Lenda? Yeah, I mean, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Decoupage is not one of my favorite things to do because it is, I feel kind of time consuming, however, um, you know, you can get looks and, and make designs and, and you can get really abstract with it. And I feel like 
you know, like to me, this is worth it because uh, first of all, I'm not hand painting this, <laughs> it's not happening. Um, and beyond that, I mean, that's not something that is, is very common. So I guess it's worth it. Just depends on how much time you want to spend. I would rather decoupage than stencil any day. So that's why I said, I don't even know if I'm going to do those stencils or not. <laughs> oh, hi, Aaron. And then once more, since Amy's helping me today, which I totally appreciate. Yes, final clear coat, let it dry, then iron it again to give it a final smooth finish. Okay. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, keep your eye out for the final product. Okay. Um, I'm excited, especially that little knob to go with it. And once I start seeing the design come together, I start to get excited. So I'll probably go ham on this the rest of the day. So the link to um, check out the decoupage papers um, selection is up in the description. Okay. If you use that link, I do get a credit. So thank you for your support. Um, if you're watching from YouTube or Dixie Bell's channel, the link to follow me is also on there. I will see you guys in two weeks. So same time, three o'clock Eastern on Thursday, but two weeks um, with something else. So thank you guys so much for watching and I do appreciate your engagement. Bye.